Today on Modern Faith Unlimited, the virus that attacked the world and how we as believers in Jesus should attack it back. That's next. And you know what? Let's do something cool and throw up one of those shortened intros like all the cool shows are doing. Hello and welcome to Modern Faith Unlimited. I'm William Henley. And I would be William Quinn, almost quarantined, but I'm still here to do this podcast today. Um, yeah, just like you, I'm almost quarantined. Uh, and uh, funny story is, is um, I really almost was, uh, and we'll get to that here in a bit. Um, before we get into that, I would like to thank um, our new su- subscribers. We've doubled the amount of subscribers since our last show. Um, part of the reason for that is we've had a couple of one-off videos I did. Uh, do you want to uh, point out to that? Uh, we had, um, I did a side-by-side comparison of bringing up uh, Bates from season one and season nine. And um, also did a video for um, a channel I am uh, as a tutorial on how to use the software. So um, I do want to mention that uh, this what this show normally is, uh, it's normally just Quinn and I here talking, and um, the name of the show is Modern Faith Unlimited. We are a Christian talk show. Uh, you have anything more you want to add to that, Quinn? I just want to show, share that, you know, even though I have this on, so I'll just, I'll do what I can briefly. I just want to share that, you know, this show is basically just as believers, how are we are reacting to what's going on in the world today? Like, for example, this virus that came from some country in the Far East that uh, has all of a sudden just become a godlike plague that's affected the whole world. And just how we as believers are supposed to react to that as far as like combating that uh, virus and, you know, also practical reasons to, you know, practical means to, you know, help the people that are affected by the virus and uh, also just to be in the loving hands of Christ that we need to be. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely get uh, into talking about the uh, virus in a minute. I see you got your mask. Um, my mask, I got one mask and it's actually at the office. So um, which is not doing. I've got all so I've got sorts of masks. I got like a round mask. I got one with a big Thing so uh, I'm just going with a simple one today. So I'm versatile, right, though, right. so so uh, let's uh, discuss um, the thorn in my side uh, is trying to get some of these early videos that we've recorded finished editing. Um, we recorded the video with oh. Katie back in September. It is March. Um. <laughs> The video with Jolene was filmed back in, uh, when was that? August. Video with, yeah. August, yeah. We did the Katie video right after that at the same place, like a week, like yeah. two weeks later, I think. And then the video with uh, Vitaly was filmed in like um, October. And here's the thing is, is if I screw up with Quinn, we just re-record. If I screw up with the guest, we can't re-record. I got to work with uh, what we have. The Katie video, let's address that. Um, and this is a video I'm dying to see too, because I've gotten a couple of her CDs too, and I really enjoy them. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this episode in its entirety, finished, complete. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Katie is too. So, you know, shout out to Katie. There yeah, too, and so. Katie's been like really cool. She's like just kind of like whenever, but I think even she was expecting it to be uh, Christmas. It's March now. Um, so here's the thing. Um, I've actually to the point where I've got the video cleaned up. Uh, I am actively editing it. I came up with a really odd bug that I don't even know why it's popping up. Um, it's like whenever I switch cameras, it's switching audio sources. And I don't get that because I deleted the o- mm. other audio sources out of the videos. There's only this one audio source, which is the one coming from the mic. 
So, uh, at least in the video editing software, you know, the, um, the camera, uh, the mic camera is in the original video, but it's coming in. I don't know why. So, um, that's where we are right now. Um, and, uh, anyway, that's a very, very long explanation. Um, there's also, uh, just want to touch uh, briefly on some of the technical aspects of the video. Um, I have been cleaning it up. Um, I have uh, used some uh, software, and actually the software I was demonstrating in this one-off video tutorial is actually what I've used to clean up uh, the video with Katie in it. So the video looks a lot better than the original what I shot with the camera. Um, and it's really, really cool. It actually uses an artificial intelligence to make the video look wow. better. And it's this really cool technology. I was helping uh, the company's actually based here locally in Allen, Texas. Um, and uh, cool. I was helping them with the beta testing and stuff like that. And now the video, uh, the software just like a week or two went full release, but it's really, really cool stuff. It takes like really, really bad video, cleans it up. I can't wait to see it, William. Uh, I know you're working hard on the episode and you want to get it out to us. So, um, just to let everybody know in YouTube land and also on the, on the podcast that's listening to this, we are trying to get these episodes out as quick as possible. Um, we do have other aspects of life that we have. We have jobs. Um, William uh, Henley volunteers also a gateway a lot. He has to do that a lot too. And he's very good at that also. So just please be patient with us. We are going to try to do the best we can to get these out to you, but just on the, on the other end, just be patient with us because we do have other lives and respect that. And then basically give to get basically just in due time, they're going to come out and they're going to be awesome. And I know William's going to take care of us. And I also just want to give a shout out to Evelyn. Who's been really cool at just being like, whenever um, I totally put her on hold because it's like, um, uh, definitely have issues right now with um, our recording. Uh, Quinn is like really cool at just coming over, dealing with the issues, stuff like that. I just don't want to put our guests through that. Um, now, I do want to show yeah. something really, really cool that I got. It's one of these things that I'm like, why haven't I got this earlier? So, um, just uh, 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 want to show this. This is um, a wireless mic pack. Um, and I just got two of these in and, um, unfortunately I was trying to get it to work tonight and, um, I do not know how to get it to work with, um, our mixer. So, uh, would what, would one of those work on my end too? Yes. I also ordered another mixer. Um, so you're going to be, uh, I'm going to get, be getting, uh, the mixer we have right now, Quinn bought. I'm going to be giving it back to him as well as the original mics. And, um, okay. but, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, two mics, 50 bucks for two mics. It, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, so, uh, definitely excited about that. Um, and, uh, but um, that's mainly for uh, my thought was this is going to be for like when we have guests, because um, when I don't remember if you uh, remember when we were shooting with Larry and Jolene, but um, I actually had a mic over mm -hmm. their head and uh, uh, actually yeah. once the mic actually mm -hmm. fell on Jolene. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I do remember that. She was fine, though. Just to let everybody know she was fine. She was cool about yeah. it, you know. We still love her. They love us. It's no, no harm, no foul, pretty much. So we're good to go. The episode was great, by the way. That was not in the episode. So so we're good to go. Jolene, Jolene and Larry, thank you for uh, letting us interview you if you're listening to this. So you're good to go. Yeah. So uh, you know what? Let's uh, go ahead and transition into our main topic. And we're...
we're back and uh, Quinn has lost the mask because you know what? We are in isolation. We are social distancing. And you know, the funny thing is we'd actually been messing with the Skype thing for a couple of episodes. So we've actually been social distancing for a while, but it's mainly because like Quinn lives over an hour away from me. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 the travel can be tough. You know, I live on the other side of the uh, Metroplex. Uh, I live in um, in the Seagoville area. You live in Haltom City. So it can be tough, uh, you know, for me to get there. And uh, he's never been to where I'm at. So um, the Skype thing is great, though. I mean, I love doing the Skype thing. So it's convenient for both of us to do this podcast. And, you know, thank God for technology. You know, God created this technology for a reason. You know, for times like this, especially in isolation, you know, people can communicate with each other. And, you know, you see a lot of youth groups now and and, and, and Bible study groups doing the whole Skype thing. And um, uh, what's the Google one called? Hangouts? Google yeah. Hangouts. Does anyone actually use that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? Leave a comment down below if you actually use Google Hangouts. I'm dying to know if anyone still uses that. And Skype too. I mean, I mean, we're using. I mean, I don't know if Skype is more popular than Google Hangouts, but you know, just there's, I think that, that, that there's some other ones besides those two. Also, I think people use also. And um, hey, if it's effective, you know, it gets people together. You know, more power to it. You know, I'm just so glad we have technology now because imagine this was like 30 years ago when this happened. I mean, we'd be really in trouble right now. Everybody would be super isolated right now. And you know, just thank God for technology. You know, yeah. And so uh, speaking of technology, um, I've worked from home this week, uh, two days for the first time ever. Um, my department, um, we have to have at least one person there because uh, we have to we have stuff that physically has to be done in our data center. But everybody mm-hmm. else got sent home this week um and by the way i do work in it um that's my day job um but uh it's i don't know about you but i mean i'm to the point now where i'm like why even bother to get dressed uh, i'm in my night clothes right now um and uh same here yeah same here uh and you know what i can't get a haircut anymore uh current county has shut down all barbers um and salons and stuff like that um and uh it's just um absolutely crazy um how are you how are you uh dealing with this are you working from home or anything like that i'm not working from home yet uh i'm lucky though because where i'm working right now uh we're on the 34th floor but uh, they spread everybody out. Uh, the place I work at is actually uh, three floors. We have three floors there. They spread everybody out on all three floors. So, and I'm and I'm pretty much the only one that's working right now. So I'm, I'm pretty spread out. So there's nobody around me, pretty much. Right. I know. Um, at my office, um, you know, we're the only ones on the floor, but even. St- Still, we can't have our entire team in the office because even with us being spread out, um, it's not that there's too many of us. It's because, well, let's just say the Arlington Fire Department is really, really big on the total number of people in the building. So even though right. I'm on the second floor with nobody else, nobody else, we can't move other people into your area because we're on a specialized network. So, um, but uh, there is still the total number of people you're allowed to have in a building. So. And the thing, and the thing in Dallas right now is we got the most cases in Texas right now in Dallas County. Well, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not in Dallas County myself, but I work in Dallas County. I do know Dallas County right now has the most cases of this uh, plague that's going on right now. And um, it is a little scary. So um, uh, they're thinking about I me. Mean, they're thinking about I know the mayor of Dallas is talking about, and the, the, the uh, sheriff is talking about, you know, doing the complete shutdown this week. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I've got some money stored away, so that's not going to be an issue. So uh, and uh, but. I think we're going to get through this, though. 
God's going to get us through this, though. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I do want to point out is uh, China is already back at work. Um, they shut down for about two months. The plague is over. Um, everyone's back at work now. Um, in fact, China now is sending doctors to Italy and stuff like that to help out. Um, so, uh, it, and it was getting hit really bad right now. And it's sad. I mean, yeah, I just bad for those people, especially there's a lot, and especially the elderly that's, that's getting affected by it. And, you know, I mean, a lot of them are unfortunately dying and, you know, we just need to, us as believers in Jesus, we need to pray not only for this play to go away, but also for the, um, place that is hitting really hard, especially like in. In China, thank God's going away there, especially in Italy, uh, in places you know, Spain, that are, are getting uh, southern France. Yeah. Um, the Italian speaking portion of Switzerland. And so here, here's let, the thing. Uh, let, okay. Okay, okay. One of the things, okay, this is extremely contagious, but. Not everyone is going to have a serious reaction from it. As such, I really and truly believe that the worldwide precautions are way blown out of proportion. Um, yes, we're protecting people, but at what cost? And um, I don't know about uh, you personally, but... Um, uh, I know yesterday um, I went to um, a, a Mexican restaurant uh, and uh, they're, they're now takeout only. And um, when I got there uh, and the reason I went there, one is my one of my favorite Mexican restaurants in this area. But um, number two is right next door to a Sonic and every single stall at Sonic was packed and then I saw the neon light uh, saying, um, oh, hey, uh, you know, we're um, we're open at this Mexican food restaurant. And there wasn't a single car there. I walked inside. There was right. nobody there. Um, I uh, and then uh, the waitress from the back came running to the front and she said, hey, uh, what can we do for you? We can um, uh, get you uh, uh, anything to go. We can even do margaritas and beer and stuff to go. Um, and uh, yeah. so, you know, I placed an order and then um, she came back up and she was starting saying, I don't know how we're going to stay open. She said, we were just kind of at the point where we were starting to break even. And uh, she's like, I you know, we live off of tips and stuff like that. Uh, you know, uh, the waitress and stuff, but she said that restaurant itself was at the place where they were just starting to break even. Um, because they're a fairly new restaurant. They opened up about six months ago. So as I was talking to this lady, um, uh, she, uh, you know, and I started writing, um, it was a good tip. I mean, it wasn't a ton of money, but it, I mean, it was like over 50% of my order. Um, and she just yeah. started crying and she said, oh, my gosh, she said, I'm so happy that, you know, there's still good people in this world. I'm going to call down a blessing on your house and stuff. She's like, she's like, I honestly, you know, don't know how I'm going to pay rent this month. And she just started crying and stuff. And she said, I'm just so glad that, you know, there's still good people like you who will lit, lit, leave big tips and stuff. And um, right. And, you know, this is, you know, the small mom and pop things. I mean, you know, your barber shops, barber shops are now uh, cannot be open. They're all mom and pops, uh, we're, unless you're talking about, you know, something like Pro Clips or, you know, Pro Cuts, Super Cuts, whatever. Right. Um, uh, I'm going to just add for the uh, small businesses that are going through this now because, you know, they don't have like the big money behind them. I mean, some of these are just starting up, too. And, you know. This plague that's hitting now, and all the all the people being quarantined, this is going to hit them big time. I don't know, you know. Just I'm, I mean, your case, you know, giving a big tip was great, but for one, one business that got that tip, there's probably ten that probably won't get that business. Unfortunately, you know, I mean, that's I mean, for people like that, we need to lift those people up in prayer, you know, to have have God have their hand on their businesses. I don't know 
how many of those people are believers and everything, but we need to lift those people up in prayer and, you know, just pray that God gives them, you know, protection and um, the strength to get through this time of need for them. And um, I don't know about government intervention or, you know, maybe I've heard, uh, you know, as far as apartments go, they've been talking about maybe not doing rent for the time being. Uh, I think that'd probably be good for the businesses too. You know, my mom um, said that her nail salon place um, lost their lease because, you know, they were going to have to shut down and they were begging to their landlord, uh, you know, to let them uh, not pay lease. And the landlord said, absolutely not. And kicked them out. Um, uh, And uh, but they said, you know, the landlord is probably having trouble making ends meet as well. Um, One of my favorite cafes. uh, I've taken you to this cafe. Uh, They're closed. Permanently? I don't know, but uh, they're supposed to be open on Sundays. They're not open. Okay. Um, Okay. Which they told me last week that uh, there was a good chance that if they close, they probably wouldn't reopen. Oh, boy. That's sad, too. That was a good place you took me to, and uh, I feel bad. I mean, and they were Gateway members, too, correct? I think so. Um, at least some of them were, because, you know, they would close on Saturdays and go to Saturday service up at Gateway, and um, uh, then they'd be open on Sundays. Oh, boy. We need to lift them up in prayer, you know, and, you know, if they're, you know, I hope they get through this. If not, uh, we we'll just pray that, you know, that guy will lead them to another open door. I mean, that's that, 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 that I feel for those people because they were good people when I met them and, you know, I feel for them and hopefully uh, God will get them through this one way or the other, if it's by leaving the business open or just moving them a different direction and opening another door for them. And, you know, I, I pray that God will give them that sense of the right direction for them. Oh, I do want to briefly talk about kind of uh, what's going on um, across the world with this. Uh, so uh, you mentioned um, uh, uh, that is especially affecting uh, smaller businesses, but it's uh, affecting a couple of uh, larger uh, businesses as well. Um, and uh, one of the first casualties of this was a UK airline called Flybe. Um Flybe was a regional carrier in the UK, and uh, they were kind of just staying afloat. A lot of regional carriers are like that. They, uh, you know, they have government contracts and stuff like that. They fly to these like small airports and stuff. And uh, uh, Flybe, uh, they serviced these you know, the outskirts of the UK and stuff like that. And um, this was a couple of weeks ago. And they said, uh, uh, look, they said, this is, uh, you know, everyone canceling flights and stuff. It's like, it's, uh, uh, they they said, look, we need government intervention or we're going to go bankrupt. The UK government said, uh, no, we're not at a position to, uh, uh, you know, do bailouts right now. YB went bankrupt and they closed the next day. Um, Virgin Atlantic mm-hmm. is picking up um, a lot of the flights, um, but, um, uh, you know, to help service these airports, but YB went bankrupt. Now, what's mm-hmm. interesting is uh, from what I've heard, the UK is handling this differently than every other country. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but um, the UK has not gone into lo- lockdown. They have not gone into quarantine. It is, yeah. it is business as normal. And it is because the um, people in the UK have uh, decided look, um, going into lockdown, going into isolation is really not having any effect on this virus. It's still spreading. Um, And in a couple of months, it's going to be gone anyway. So let's just let people get it. Most people are going to have a a mild um, upper respiratory infection, maybe a mild fever. And uh, we'll treat the the serious cases as they come in. And, um, And you know what? 
the UK doesn't have any more cases than any other place in Europe. And they're not in lockdown. Very interesting. Very interesting. I think um, the UK, I know, is, um, you know, I think I think they're taking an extra step of precaution, you know, as far as the virus goes. Uh, they're, I think they have more um, means to uh, combat it than they, I think we do right now because they're so more closer to uh, in proximity to where the, the epicenter is pretty much. Hey, um, I just think a lot of it is that um, – uh, you know, the thought, you know, we can't shut down our economy for two months um, and uh, we uh, it, it's not doing any good. Um, I mean, look, yeah, we're in lockdown. We're in isolation. Um, yesterday, Italy, who's been in lockdown now for a month, had the highest num. They surpassed China in the number of deaths. Uh, a, com- a country of 100 million people surpassed a country of 1.3 billion in the number of deaths, and they've been in lockdown for a month. Obviously, the not- lockdown is not having any effect. Yeah, um, I don't know if the U.S. can t- look into that. Um, I-, I don't buy- I mind either or. I, th- I think just anything that... What it takes to get rid of this, I'm fine with. If it even means for us to lock down, that's fine. If it if, if there are other countries are not doing it, that's fine. Um, I think let's just be here's my take on this. God's in control and he's gonna take care of this one way or the other. The God we serve is so much bigger than this virus. He's bigger than any of the viruses that came before that. And there, I mean, there's probably going to be a bigger, bad one that comes 10 I agree. years from now. It's got, God's got this. We're going to be fine. He's got, we're going to get through this. And I believe for a firm fact that, you know, what's going to be the end result is, is people are going to come to the Lord through this. Like never before, because this is a worldwide thing that's going on right now. The church needs to step up and just reach those people. You know, people are going to be vulnerable now because of this virus, and they're going to want answers. Let's show them that answer. The, not just a answer, but the true answer. Jesus. Yeah, and uh, I do want to, uh, before we wrap up, there's two things I want to discuss. Uh, one um, is in our show notes. The other one I forgot to put in the show notes. Um, but uh, first of all, what is your thoughts about the government? Uh, like Tarrant County, for instance, announced yesterday that that um, all houses of worship are closed. Okay. Um, simple. The church building might be closed, but that doesn't mean the church is closed. Because of the technology we have now, like I watched Gateway, I watched Gateway online today. I watched Christ Church online today. I watched Milestone online today. I watched Hillsong Dallas online today. The message is going to get out. Regardless. Oh, Hillsong! That you know? makes sense, Hillsong Dallas. Uh, but uh, I'd like to see that. Yeah, they uh, yeah they're they're starting on they they just started online yeah. last week. A so lot that's a of good thing. Just that's started a, online last week. Yeah, yeah, and you know what? I think that's gonna be that's gonna help because the gospel is gonna get out. I think the seeds of this are gonna you're gonna see this, the end result is. I don't know if it's gonna be a month from now, three months from now, years from now. But there's going to be end result. Is there's going to be fruit that comes out of this harvest? Yeah. I think the, I think the harvest is starting right now to show that you know God's no stranger to the times like this. Technology we have now, it's no accident. Mm. Uh, all these churches starting up online, it's no accident. God knows what's going on. These seeds are being planted for a reason, and the fruit is going to come watch it's gonna come right man uh, i'll tell you like uh, i got uh friends in um east tennessee who uh for the first time ever um uh 
live broadcast. Their entire county has like 20,000 people. Uh, they, they live mm-hmm. broadcast for the first time. Um, uh, my uh, friend who is um, an army chaplain, uh, he's deployed right now in Poland. Even they are social distancing. And for the first time ever, the, uh, his, as an army chaplain, their chapel service was live broadcast today. Um, he was uh, hitting me up a few days ago, wanting to know what equipment they needed to order to be able to live broadcast. Um, and, uh, uh, and everything. Everything in the live broadcast stuff now, it's so inexpensive now. Anybody can use it. Anybody can be trained in it. We've live broadcast. That's what the great thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, we usually exactly. don't live broadcast because, you know, uh, definitely need to edit. <laughs> but um, in our case, definitely. But, you know, after the ads, it becomes great. So, now, I mean. Thanks to Sir Hanley there. So One of the questions I wanted to point out to you is, uh, and and Mm -hmm. let me rephrase the question. Uh, What do you think about the government shutting down churches? Not voluntarily, forcefully. I can see where you're coming from there. Um, if it's if it's a means to save our lives, I mean, so that you know we're not in a close proximity with each other, I understand. But I don't want to get too far a slippery slope in the future, so that if it's a more religious sense, I I do see where you're coming from there. I understand this mean in this situation. I understand it's not going to affect the gospel getting out because I think even if it was shut down for even worse reasons, like as far as religious persecution goes, I think I'm always going to think there's going to be a way for the gospel to get out regardless. So I'm not worried about that. So, but I do see where you're coming from on that. I think for this, I think God understands why they did that for this reason. But I do think though, we need to need to keep an eye out if it gets more extreme. Well, and I know so. last week a lot of churches voluntarily shut down. Gateway was one of them. A um, lot of uh, most churches vo- have been voluntarily shutting down. Um, I do have an issue with uh, be, with uh, being told that we have to be, to shut down, um, and that's my issue on that. Now I do want to talk briefly about some of the good things that I've been seeing going on right now, and. Um, uh, uh, actually, I'll be right back. I, I want to grab something. Okay. So this is uh, uh, just kind of funny. Uh, so I have been to the store more times in the past week than I have been in the past two years. And uh, that is because uh, right. there's just stuff I haven't been able to find. But lo and behold... Today, woohoo! <laughs> and, and he found some Aldi. Right? Um, and no, this was also about nine thirty in the morning. Aldi opens at like what eight or nine. But um, uh, right. First, my issue is um, I had a really, really nasty um intestinal infection i have something called diticulosis um and it is the worst flare-up i've ever had um and that's probably the next terms we can put it on here i would yeah. think right um and okay well diticulosis uh is um it's a fairly common medical condition it literally means that on the inside of your intestines you have these little pouches um, and the thing is, the stuff like uh, nuts, seeds, and bread can get stuck up in these pouches. And bread is, well, I mean, you'd think seeds and nuts are bad, which, you know, that because of their, but bread is really bad because bread can expand. And so this is uh, one of the worst flare ups um, I've ever ever had i'm on some strong medication and the thing is is um it is 
the most pain I've ever had. I've known women who've had it say that the pain is worse than childbirth. Um, and mm. uh, uh, it is, uh, I mean, I literally felt like, uh, if you've ever seen the movie Alien, it, it literally feels like something is inside of you trying to get out. I mean, it's, uh, it's that intense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's one of the funny things. So uh, but let's talk about some of the good that I've been seeing. So. Um, so I've just been needing life to slow down. Um, and. Uh, uh, and it's not just that I needed a vacation. It's like because it's like the whole world um, around me uh, has just been crazy. And um, I've needed uh, just, it's like almost like I needed the entire world to slow down. This has happened. Um, And I know a lot of people, other people um, think about it. A lot of people don't have time to spend, uh, you know, with their uh, uh, kids because of work. Um, even if they're spending time with the kids, the kids are in little league or dance or gymnastics or, uh, uh, and so it's like, yeah, you know, they may be there on the sidelines rooting the kid on, but they're not really spending time with their kids. Um, and uh, so in the past couple of weeks, you know, uh, spring break is extended. Uh, uh, we're talking now about uh, not going back to school this academic year. Um, uh, people are being forced to work from home. Families are being forced to spend time together. Uh, yeah. And I look at that as a good thing. Um, you know, especially in those sports right now, which is um, a little bummer for me, but I look at this now as a time to get right with God and spend more time with him. Absolutely. And, you know, spend time with your family, spend time with God. Um, <laughs> just get in the word as much as you can yes. and just, you know, do what you can, just get right with him. So I look at this as just, you know, hey, this could be God ordained, you know, especially for believers that, probably struggle with finding time with God. Hey, let me do this. It probably might not be in the best interest of the world, but as believers, it gives us time to see what God has for us. You know, in one way, I'm kind of wondering if it is in the best interest of the world, because I mean, it is literally forcing the entire planet to reevaluate their priorities. Um, Right. And um, I mean, just think about all of those people like, oh, gosh, I, this is going to be so stereotypical. But all of those people in Japan who like live at the office, who suddenly having to go home. Yeah. You know, true. And. Uh, uh, here, here, in, here in Dallas, too. Yeah. I mean, there's probably people that. That probably people can I work I work in the second largest tallest building in Dallas, Renaissance Tower. I don't know, there's probably people there that are probably workaholics and you know, I mean there's probably gonna be a shutdown pretty soon and it's gonna give them some time to think. Yeah. I, I don't know how if them are married or not, but it's gonna give them some information. Hey, you know what? Maybe I do need to spend more time with my family. Maybe I need to spend more time with God. Mm. Maybe I need to spend, you know, Getting my priorities straight and, you know, hey, saying, hey, maybe money's not the most important thing. Maybe work is not the most important thing. Mm. There's a higher power out there. For for us, it's, it's Jesus. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I know everybody doesn't have that same faith as us, but since it's being a Christian show, you know, oh, maybe Jesus needs to be looked at as a top priority in life. I'm just saying. Yeah. So, uh, you know, this show is kind of long. I know our last few episodes have been kind of long. Um, now, once it's edited down, um, I, I mean, we've been recording for we've been recording for an hour. I think once it's edited down, it'll probably be about 35 minutes. Um, so this okay. so this is one of our longer episodes. But in any case, I think uh, we probably should wrap it up. Um, do you have any final words? Basically, all I want to say is this. 
God knows what's going on right now. He created this world, you know, um, all those years ago. And he's got this. This is going to pass. And hopefully when this does pass, people are going to look at they're fine. And they don't they didn't deserve this, but they're going to look at the creator, hopefully Jesus. And they're going to see that he is real. Hopefully this becomes a massive revival that if it pans out, the world's not going to know what happened, but we know it's going to happen, that revival is going to happen. It's going to take place. And we're going to see that, you know, God's got us in the palm of our hands and wants to be our savior. So I hope and pray that does happen throughout this. And as for me, uh, just kind of want to say, um, God is not surprised. Um, he knew that this was going to happen. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm not saying he caused this to happen. Do not get me wrong. I am not saying God caused this to happen. He knew it was going to happen. There's a difference. And he has a plan. And um, he. Uh, I strongly believe that uh, good's going to come out of this. It already is. And um, by the way, if you're in uh, one of the areas that is uh, highly affected, uh, uh, sorry for you. Uh, if you're in lockdown, uh, uh uh, and things are rough for you. Uh, just gonna say uh, sorry. I, uh, you know we're all kind of uh, in the same boat. Um, at least I can get out and go to the store. Um, by the way, if you guys have some neighbors and stuff that have trouble getting out or don't know how to order online or stuff like that, just kind of check in on them. Um, maybe wear your mask. You know, uh, especially if they're elderly. Um, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, God's not surprised. Uh, and like I said, I feel for you, Italy. I feel for you, uh, friends. I feel for you, Spain. I feel for you, Switzerland. You guys are the ones who are hardest hit in the entire world by this. I don't know why it is so much harder there than any place else, but um, we do feel for you. And uh, also, shout out to the UK for uh, uh, saying, hey, uh, you know, whatever will be, will be. Come on. Yeah. Come on. So, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, from what, let's go ahead and wrap. Yeah. So, uh, well, yeah, let's wrap it. And, uh, let me just tell you, Rick, um, yeah, good. Let me just say right quick. Um, let me give our social media platforms, um, on, uh, Instagram. It's a uh, modern, is it modern unlimited or modern faith? Uh, unlimited? On Instagram yeah. it's modern faith unlimited. On Twitter, it's Modern Unlimited, I yes. do know. Um, and and uh, Facebook, Modern Faith Unlimited. Uh, we also have our website, modernfaithunlimited.com. I just actually uh, did a blog on Wednesday about the uh, this uh, about the subject. So please check that out and comment if you can. I thought I did well on it. So um, And then uh, like, subscribe, share, all the good stuff. And just uh, spread the word out about our show. Uh, we're still getting used to it. Um, Hopefully, um, if there's anything you want us to talk about on the show, please comment, and we'll do the best we can to research it and comment on it also. Yeah, and by the way, um, one of these days, we will be back in the studio, uh, and I, I mean, I know the lighting. I was actually going to set up the lights tonight, use the wireless mics, and um, it was just taking too long to get everything going, and I finally said, you know what, let's just go back to what works. We know this works, but we'll eventually be back in the studio. Quality is going to be better. Um, oh, speaking of blogs, um, I recently wrote one. I thought I did a good job on it. Maybe um, maybe topic for a future episode. It's called uh, More Faith Than a Mustard Seed. Um, Which is really good, by the way. I commend you on that. That was a really good uh, one. Um, by the way, I did read yours. Great blog. Um, and so, uh, yeah. So um, even when we're not recording shows, we are blogging. We are posting stuff on social media. So, uh, looks up. Okay. So, uh, until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.